Good morning, guys. How are we doing? Welcome to show 357. God, man, we're flying through the shows. Today, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to look at um, what Ronaldo, the football, is kind of going through right now and kind of what things in him and what he's going through and some of the traits based on, obviously, a very outside perspective. Goes on with a lot of guys every single day. I'm just kind of, kind of want to look at those learning points that we can take away from what I, what I kind of maybe assu uh, I, I, I'm assuming that he's going through right now based on his actions. And hopefully we can learn a little bit something about, uh, about it. So let's get into it. Welcome to the Rise to Five show. I'm your host, James Borman. If you are coming through, please do hit the love heart button. Please do comment down below. Let me know if you struggle with transition. So transition from one job to another, from one um, age of parenting to another, whatever it might be, transitioning is difficult. You know, when I first left the Royal Marines in, oh my God, all the way back in 2013, <coughs> no, 2011, God, 2013, that's when I started my business, 2011, um, September, in September, it's what prompted and triggered probably the biggest downfall in my life for three over three years. A transition of status, a transition of life, a transition of purpose, a transition of way of living, a transition of financial security. So much changed. So much changed. I felt like I lost an awful lot of status in terms of who I was and what I was trying to achieve and being really proud of myself for being a Royal Marine Commando. You know, I've worked very hard to, to wear the green beret, to wear my Royal Marine flashes, and I used to be proud as muck wearing them, right? <clears throat> I used to love the camaraderie with the boys. I used to feel a part of the boys. I used to feel part of something. And then when I left, I felt part of nothing, and I felt no pride. Um, even though... When I looked at my career in the military, I looked back with fond memories and I cherished those moments. In that moment when I was living for three years after, I didn't have anything that I was doing that I was proud of. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't see those things, right? Um, and it was a real struggle and, and it caused the collapse of my internal system, if you like, i.e. this in here, my noggin. And I completely spiralled downhill and hit the ground harder, hard, harder than a rock falling from a mountain. And um, it was very difficult to, it took me three years to transition. It took me three years to transition. Um, and I think I see this an awful lot in parenting as well. So I, I, I personally feel it as well. So like when I, I, I think I have struggled with my first big two, transitioning from being babies who wanted to be around me to now being teenagers and uh, having to fight for time. But I often look at Ronaldo, I was watching the football last night, well, I watched five minutes of football before falling asleep on the sofa at five past seven, <laughs> off to my marathon yesterday. Um, but I was watching the build up and a lot of the chat was about Ronaldo. And um, I, really kind of felt for him I really kind of feel sorry for the guy um, and I think sometimes we fail to forget he's actually a bloke he's just underneath all of that bravado and ego and money he's actually a guy and um, he's a guy who lost a child last um, September I think it was or sometime last summer when I think his twins were born or they had two babies and one of them died at birth so I still feel like there's a huge element of that grief or delayed grief going on behind the scenes. Um, he's a man who's coming to the end of his career after being like one of the top kings of football for the last 10 years. You know, that's a status. You know, he has that status. He, in his mind, he's always being talked about as the greatest of all time, etc. Now we're talking about the end for him and I think that that is going to be a really difficult period of time for him in his life um, being able to understand how do I close down this career that I've been one of the best in the world at 
how do I handle that? How do I handle and manage that at the same time as handling grief of losing a child? Um, how do I handle that as well as all of the media and all of the people that used to be my teammates jumping on the bandwagon and saying I've got to do this or I've got to do that? And I can, you know, I, and I can sometimes as well, I, I kind of feel like, you know, it's his last World Cup, possibly. So I get being upset and angry, like you're being made substitute and you're like, God, I want to make the most of every part of this. And I get it. And there's an element of ego in there as well. Of course there is. But, you know, there's, it's very difficult, I think, for all professional sportsmen, not just Ronaldo, but anybody who goes through a career of being trained from maybe like a, what is it, about 12 years old now. And you're conditioned and moulded to be a footballer. So you go through the 12 years, if you make it through the academies, you get into the under-21s, and then you go into the pros, and then you live this out the season, and you get to mid-30s. And then you're no, need, you're no longer needed anymore. Now, like, I'm 44. You know, I run a marathon yesterday. I'm doing 100 miles. I'm, I'm like, I feel fit. And in my head, I feel really capable. And then in the mind of a 35-year-old or a 36-year-old, in their head, they're like, I can still play. Look at Pepe as well from uh, Portugal. He scored... Last night when I was looking at the uh, the match report this morning, he's 40 years old, so he still feels like he's got a role to play. Ronaldo still feels like he's got a place to play. We still feel like we can keep up and do stuff, right? So in our heads, it must be super frustrating when you've been brought up your whole life as a professional footballer or a professional tennis player or a professional American football player, whatever it might be, to then suddenly come to the end of that reign and suddenly say, Thank you, the world keeps spinning and you're gone. It's really, really difficult to take. And I've often put myself in that mind of those sports, elite sports personalities. Some go on to coaching, some go on to presentation on, on the media, some go off to do other bits and pieces. You know, I was listening to Peter, Peter Crouch's um, podcast with uh, Stephen Bartlett on Diaries of a CEO. And it's really interesting how... He never really struggled with that transition because he had lots and lots in the pipeline. He kept himself super busy, but he was talking about a lot of people struggling with that transition. You know, talking about an understanding that we have to continuously evolve our thinking and our action to make sure that we are moving on with our lives. And I think it's, it's really important to understand that we are only human at the end of the day and it is only human emotion to suddenly start doubting ourselves or start questioning ourselves or start like finding it difficult going through the transition phase does that make sense to everyone like and i think it's more of an awareness thing you know it's more of an awareness thing you know <laughs> like in my head right as a father to a 12 like when they when my big kids who are 15 and 17 now when they were 12, I was almost thinking about putting them on the naughty step because what I used to do when I brought them all the way up to a certain age, I used to put them on the naughty step and they'd sit on that naughty step to chill out, right? But like my brain wasn't transitioning and I wasn't evolving my parenting as well as I should have. It's like, how do I handle this situation? How do I deal with this attitude? How do I deal with the minds from back here? Like I'm in a position where I can't really put them on the naughty step what else can I do? So that's been a journey. Like, and I think many parents watching right now will understand that, you know, I've got a one and a half year old and a five year old now, and I'm better equipped to deal with those girls when they grow up and older and how to handle that. Whereas Jemima hasn't gone through that fully with her own children. She's witnessed me and the struggles that I've had doing it. So I think there's an awful lot to be said about like what we go through, like, you know, whether you're a professional footballer and one of the best in the world and you're, and, and you're slowly, maybe just crumbling slightly at the fact that it's the end of your career and, and the pressure and the external pressure, taking all, strip all the money away, strip all of the, like, stuff. He's just a bloke who I think he's struggling to know where his place is in the world. And I think that's one of the most hardest things that a man will face is knowing where his place is in the world. And I think when we don't know where our place is in the world, we become, we become quite impulsive. We make bad decisions. Um, we we tend to drift. We tend to feel lost, and we lose our identity, right? And I know that's how I felt personally when I left the military, 
or when I felt like I wasn't doing a great job parenting, evolve into that. But I just wanted to bring that up and raise that up and talk about some of those subjects. What I really love, if you're honest and open, are some periods of your time in terms of, I always like for all of you to take some form of action to really solidify what I'm saying. It's like, what are areas that you have struggled to transition in? in your life what are things where you have struggled to find your place or struggled to find your identity or struggled to evolve i know that some of the guys in here have spoken about parenting but has there been situations in job and i think the reason i try and get you to write those things is because somebody that comes in and reads it it makes them feel better that actually they're not the only one in that situation maybe you have a piece of advice that you could offer someone else this is what this whole community and movement is about right is supporting each other, is offering advice and guidance and experience from each other so that we can take that forwards, moving forwards, all right? Anyway, I'll stop rambling. I look forward to seeing you on Friday, last one of the week. Um, have a great week. Hope you're doing well. Catch you soon.